Welcome to the Mind, Body, and Soul Show. I'm your host, Coach Steve Toth, and uh, also the founder of Conscious Evolution Media, as well as Real Coaching Radio and TV Network. And our guest this afternoon is somebody very special, and his name is Nick Dillon, and he's joining us from, where are you joining, joining us from, Nick? Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Milwaukee, Wisconsin, the cheese, the cheese place. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> okay then, and Nick is a certified life coach, a counselor, an author, and a motivational speaker, and I'm sure many other things. But before we get to all those many other things, um, let's just get some clarity about if I took away all those titles, Nick, and all the other titles that anybody has ever called you, what would be left? Who is really Nick Dillon? Nick Dillon is a humble, Christian, honest man who loves life, loves giving up himself, loves helping others. Okay, got it. That's clear. All right, so I'm just speaking from my experience, Nick. So people that love to help others... Sometimes, not a lot of times, but sometimes, they have a hard time helping themselves. And it's interesting that you mentioned that because my life started that way. As I reflect back on teenage years, that, that was my struggle. The struggle hmm. was to be able to help myself. The struggle was to be okay with who I was, um, to, be, to have a better self-image to have some confidence in myself I didn't have it and so once I got it which took 30 plus years to get there <laughs> <laughs> so I'm okay. truly a work in progress okay we want people to to pay attention here everybody that's watching live and also on the archive show is that our evolution could happen in a moment but sometimes it takes a while <laughs> exactly <laughs> And so it took a while for me to really um, build up the confidence, build up the self-image, build up and, 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 and go through the process of moving past the negative programs, the experiences, and all of that stuff of my past to get to where I am now. And so now, in the space that I am now, I'm just determined to, and on a mission to be able to help someone not go down the same path. And to be honest, you know, I've read a lot, I've researched a lot, and, um, and written myself a whole lot that has helped me now that wasn't available at age 15, 16 years old. So that, and that was a huge struggle back then is that I didn't feel heard, I didn't feel loved, I didn't feel like I had a way out. And at that time in my life, I felt that the only out was to end my life. And so to be in the space that I am now is a blessing. It's, it's, I can't even imagine or even explain to you how much better I am and, and, and for that am willing to give back and help others. Yeah, but would you be willing to share with our viewers just a little bit about that moment? Because uh, I believe that all of us, including myself, have a divine moment in, in life. And I like to use that word divine, because this is a divine moment when we all of a sudden make a very powerful choice that the way things have been and the way we have, have shown up in the world is no longer acceptable and we are willing to willing to do either one or two things we're willing to either kill ourselves <laughs> because we have just and this is not funny because I you know but I, I I have to laugh because I was at that divine moment once where I was ready to take my life and I wasn't laughing at the, at the time but now I am because now I see how ridiculous uh, that was yes but um, um, you know, at that moment, we either choose that or we choose uh, a different way of being, a different way of life, or we just, you know, come back and continue what we've been doing because we 
apparently haven't gone deep enough. Exactly. So would you be willing to just share a little bit about that? What is it? What is that divine moment like? And uh, thanks um, for asking that question because for me, really, the, the divine moment or the defining moment at that point was I had... You, 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 and, and, I'm, and I'm dating myself back to that space. And when I'm in that space at 15 and a half, 16 years old, what's my reality right now is I'm defining myself based on what others say. Um, I was going through some major childhood bullying. Um, I was suffering and still am, still do deal with um, a respiratory disease, which limited me to do a whole lot of the things that I wanted to do in life. And I was teased and mocked and things of that nature, and um, and may have had some 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 you know just focusing challenges. Why and were you I, teased, Nick? Um, be, and I I think a lot of it was because um, at that time to goof off, and if you didn't goof off, and you were straight laced and you wanted to do right and do good and things of that nature, and my parents were really disciplinarians and and really focused on education, so. I was, if you will, what they called a nerd at the time, and and because I wanted to get my schoolwork. The biggest thing that I had going for me that I believed in was that I was smart. Mm -hmm. And back then, and even in some cases now, that that doesn't always socialize great if if you're going for being included. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so I struggled with that because I wanted to be popular. I wanted to hang out with the guys. I wanted to hang out with the girls and, and all of this. And I didn't have that because I was shy mm -hmm. and I was recluse. And um, and I had my medical challenges. Mm -hmm. And so that means I was this skinny little kid who I didn't feel I was, I felt I was ugly. And I went through all of this mentally. And so I had a, at a point in my life felt as though what's, what the only thing you got going that's your best option is to not be here. And what I found so interesting, um, Steve, is that I honestly, because in my family, in my household, you didn't have a voice. And your parents, my parents dictated what you will do, what you, how you will behave, so on and so forth. And they had some pretty strict rules. And so you didn't have too much of an opinion unless they took that as disrespect. And so what I started doing at an early age was journaling. I wrote because my journal didn't judge who I was. And that was my biggest cry out for help to be able to put it out on pencil and paper. And it, and, and when I got to that moment where I planned to, to end my life, it was my religious values that really bought me out of it. And um, and I and and from that because that is what brought me out of it. I went into a full mode of, I want to read more. And if if I need to recognize that God is the reason why I'm here, and I need to see myself like He sees me, and I need to know that everything He made was wonderfully made, and and I need to be okay with that. But like I said, fast forward 30 years, mm. I'm here now. Okay, fantastic, and um, and we are better for it. Yes, <laughs> yes. including <laughs> including including you're better for it. Um, I just want to mention so that we don't we don't go off on a tangent that we are not a religious network and we don't talk about religion that much. Mm -hmm. um, if you mention it once and once and once or twice, that's okay. Um, and and the reason why we don't do it is that there's two things we don't do on this network. One is religion, the other is politics. And the reason for it is because. There's way too many uh, people that are um, uh, way on the left side and way on the right side. Right. And I'm just not interested um, in having those kind of discussions and dialogues about who's right and who's wrong. That's not what this network is is all about. And I'm exactly. not gonna and I'm not gonna do it either about you know the, the left or the right in politics because um, that conversation isn't going to win anybody over so exactly <laughs> so that's it <laughs> okay 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 so spirituality is, is is fantastic and and if you know and if your religion fits into your spirituality that's fantastic too 
So moving on, um, I'm curious about, you wrote this book, book about who you think you are, is the title, which uh, I love that title, and uh, because, because, you know, I used to ask myself that question too, who the hell do you think you are that you can do this? <laughs> mm -hmm. And, uh, and for, for a good, good part of my life, um, that question actually uh, stopped me from, from really being who I am today. And, and, then, and then you continue that title with the power of believing in yourself. So it's, it's a very powerful um, title, and I'm sure it's a very powerful book as well. And um, I, I also found out just throughout the years that I've been doing this, I've been in personal development for 30 years, more than 30 years, actually, I don't want to admit. And <laughs> I've been building this network for 10 years. But the thing is, is that everybody that I have ever talked to or had on the show or on the network, our messages are pretty much all the same. The, the underlying uh, purpose of all of us is really to get to love. And different people get to it in different ways, and all the ways that we get to it is just fine. Uh, it's not about the right way. There is no right way uh, to get to love. There's just a way. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And, and so, so, yeah, I, I don't read as much as I used to, uh, not because I became ignorant. It's because that's what I have found after the thousands of books that I have read is there's no new information out there other than we got to get to loving ourselves and we got to get to becoming awake and becoming conscious and that's how simple it is exactly and then now we can talk about how did you get to it and how do how do we help others to get to it because that's exactly. really that's really really I believe your purpose and that's what our purpose is here at the network thank you and you you said a powerful statement is that it all starts with ourselves and we have to learn how to start by loving ourselves first mm -hmm. and for me in the, in the premise behind the book is just as you stated I was in a period where I said you know what who are you and then I reflected back on that teenage years where you you allowed other things to define you and I'm sure maybe you can even reflect back and, 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 and we've heard statements like you know what you're just like your dad or you're just like your grandpa or you're just this and you're just that and a lot of times we, we want to know why do I think the way I think why do I behave the way I behave or here's a better one Nick we say that I'm not gonna turn out like my mother and my father and then as we grow uh, we recognize along the way that we are turning out exactly like them exactly Exactly. <laughs> Which really ticks us off. <laughs> yes, it does. <laughs> because it we, does. Said, we said, we said, I'm we weren't never going to be, it. I'm never going to be like my father. Or my we mother. said we weren't going to do it. <laughs> so what the book does is it takes you down the road to understanding who you are. And I used the acrostic, um, the word believe, and for each one of the letters, I, I, each one of the letters stands for uh, a a individual thing that helps you understand who you are that word B the letter B is our behavior um, knowing that you believe in yourself and your behavior dictates who you are and then that E that first E deals with emotions emotions make up who you are that L is our our life experiences and then that I is our image of self and that that E is our um, environment the V is our values and beliefs and then that last E is our um, experiences our life experiences and and all of that makes up who we are and as you go down and you think about the things that are going on in your life how you're thinking how you're behaving how you make decisions how you solve problems how you deal with emotions it falls under one of those categories and my whole objective in the book is that once you find out who you are why you are made this way everything is the power of choice accept who you are love who you are 
And if you don't like how you do certain things, choice, change. You have the power of choice and not allowing your past, your experiences, your relationships, and all those other things that might be out there to dictate your actions. You've got to own it. You've got to move forward in the direction that you want to go, certainly now that you become conscious of who you are. And so you can no longer use the cop-out, well, I don't understand, because now you do. Hmm. Okay, it's brilliant. So I, I've talked about this with many people many times, and what I like about the network is every time I talk with somebody, we always get a different, kind of a different slant on the same thing. So I want to I wanna explore that again. Okay. So people ask me all the time, okay, so, yeah, it's easy for you guys to talk about, um, you just got to find out who you are, but a lot of people that talk to me and send me emails and, and call me, they say, I have no clue how the heck to find out who I am. <laughs> so what, what would you like to say to that? Well, what I, what I like to say to it is that, which is, and, and I'm glad you mentioned that because I anticipated that as people started reading the book, which is why at the end of each chapter, I have little assessment tools so that you do some self-analysis because it's really about examining your belief system and examining what's important to you. You know, what drives you intrinsically, what drives you, you know, emotionally. You know, we, we, we make choices and, and we do whatever we want to do in life based on choices. Something drives you. And it's just doing the pencil and paper exercise and really drilling down into what's my purpose? What's my mission in life? What do I want to do? What do I want to be? And why is that? And when you write all that down and you look at it and you dissect it and really examine it, it again goes back to first, beyond just being okay with myself, loving myself enough to go get what I want, to go be what I want to be, and not allowing anything to stop me. So it's, it's just that determination, that, that mindset that you got. Interesting. All right, so, so when people are when people are looking for, um, I mean, and, and again, I said this also uh, probably a thousand times, is that everybody came here for something specific to accomplish in their life. And so I'm, I'm noticing that, that what you have done in your life is you, and, and I'm giving this example because this is, this is how I feel that a lot of times viewer can really relate to you and relate to us in the network that you, and, and this, this has proven to be really truth, um, almost, almost universal truth, that the things that people are struggling with in their life early on, they becoming a master of it. It's almost like you get to have a doctorate in the opposite of whatever it is that you were challenged by. So your example was, um, you know, you were this is probably not the right thing to say, the black sheep. <laughs> Don't take that wrong. Because yes. I, I, have no, I have no issues with color at all, zero. Mm -hmm. I didn't even grow up. I grew up in Eastern Europe, so I didn't even see a black person until I came to New York. And then I was at, a, at, an, at an hour. It's like, oh, my God, I have never seen a person like that. What is that about? And then I didn't learn being prejudiced because I was never taught to be. So that's another proof of our environment. Depending on where we where we grow up, we pick up uh, these things from our parents, other people, school. Um, you know what's wrong with black black people? Absolutely nothing. They just like us. Exactly. <laughs> There's no difference. There's no difference. Exactly. And and, <laughs> and so so what I noticed is now what you have become once you got your PhD. Now you are completely expressed completely open, completely willing to talk about anything there is to talk about, and you became an author, you became a motivational speaker, now you walk the talk, and same thing with me, would you believe, because I grew up in a communist country, I wasn't able to speak. They always wanted to shut me up. <laughs> because what I, but what I had to say about communism, they didn't like to hear it. <laughs> so. 
so you know, I, I grew up in a way that um, I wasn't supposed to. I, I was actually beaten for speaking my truth. So I, when I came to this country, I had, you know, I had this issue that, that oh my God, I can't really speak my truth to other people, to groups, to you know, large uh, gather at large gatherings. So I had a problem speaking in front of, in front of. Uh, people so look at what I become <laughs> I, I, I ended up in broadcasting and I spoke in front of millions of people now after 10 years and I don't even care you know it's like it's so natural to me that the thought doesn't even come across in my mind that hey wait a minute you you have this microphone in front of you and you're on television and I also do cable TV shows I don't care it's so natural to me um, and, and so I received my PhD and and this is, and it, it's so obvious to me, and I know to you too, that this is your passion. This is what drives you. So there is a huge gift in, in becoming the opposite of our, uh, I would say, core issues. Because, you know, you had your core issues. You actually said something about you that wasn't okay. And I said something about me that wasn't, <laughs> that wasn't okay. And that's the only way I could survive. Uh, the pain that I was feeling because I wasn't accepted, right? Exactly. And and so I want people to to feel that and think that this is not so bad. <laughs> you know, just because we had to go through this stuff, on the other side, once we get to the other side, the good news is that you go, you're going to have a life that you have always dreamed about. Exactly. You now, get the opportunity to be able to overcome that and if you can catch it early on if you can you said something powerful you you, you were you, you were you were not given a voice but look at what the determination has done for you 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 sophisticatedly found a different platform that gives you yet a voice but a big voice and an opportunity to reach globally that's awesome and so nothing stops the determination when you want change. So I like what you, I, I like what you're saying. Yeah, and actually, yeah, and there's there's another piece there. Um, these are like I call them nuggets. <laughs> yes. And I want to make sure the nuggets are not left on the floor because I want to. So I want to pick it up. So the nugget here is that is that what what's what's really cool is that we get to we get to finally not just to know who we are. But what it is that we get to do for a living that isn't even work. Like what I do for a living, I don't call it work because it isn't. I don't, I don't go somewhere at 8 o'clock or 9 o'clock in the morning and start watching the clock. When is it going to be 5 o'clock? Because I hate being there. That ain't it. My life is, <laughs> I, I have so much energy and I want to do so much of this is that I can have enough and I'm loving every moment of it it's not like I don't even care about the clock the only reason I care about the clock time doesn't even exist for me the only reason it does exist so you and I could do this show at a certain time exactly <laughs> if that was not a requirement I would have no use for time yes yes Great, great, great concept to look at it that way because I always say too is that if you're doing your passion on purpose and that purpose allows you to be able to sustain yourself, then it never feels like work. And that's something that you would do for free if it's really your passion. You know. Well, I did it for free for several years. I'm sure you, you have go. too. There you go. Yes. <laughs> Yes. We all we all have to do it because at first, at first when we do this, and this is kind of funny too, because at first I didn't feel that I could charge for this because I was a beginner, and I am going like, well, I'm trying to figure out, I'm I'm trying to learn how to do this, so I I don't have the guts to really charge people for this. I'm just going to give it away, and so I did that for like three years, and then one day it just was so apparent that wait a minute. There's value. There's I'm serving people. I'm I'm providing value. So yes, I need to get paid for it because it's the only way I can spread 
<laughs> my cat wants to be in the show, and one way or another, she's going to be in the show. <laughs> I see her. So, so she... <laughs> okay, okay, Molly, wonderful. Okay, so, uh, so what's cool is that we also get to make a good living doing our passion. So that's an important message also to live with all the viewers because there's way too many people out there, especially right now in this economic times, that go to work and and hate and despise every moment that they spend there. Because that's not who they are. So they do it because they have to provide a roof over their head or their family's head and provide provide food and we have to exist. And and the message I guess is that there is more to life than just to exist. Um, most of us need to look at this. We, we, we already come automatically with P, with a PhD and that's called <clears throat> living moment to moment. We already know how to do it. <laughs> yes. And if you believe and if you believe in a higher power, which I know you do, we are always taken care of. One way or another. We never we never die because um, well I can't say that because there are people that are dying. I just noticed. That's not a that's not a universal truth. There are people dying from from hunger and there are people dying because they don't have a roof over their head. Right. So, but but in form of, in terms of my own personal experience, I have considered several times in my life that what if I'll just let it all go, and I end up on the streets. And my answer was, if that's what the higher power has for me <laughs> to do, I'm okay with that. I'm I am willing to go on the streets if that's what I have to do. Because I never had. I never had to do it because you know you be you will be taken care of. Yeah, because I know I will be taken care of one way or another. And if I'm not, then then that's that's what I'm supposed to be doing. So I'm going to stop basically resisting what so in the moment altogether. There's no reason humanity's pain comes from not being okay with how things are right now. Like we had some technical challenges uh, getting getting the show going, and and I basically said to myself, okay, so what's going on right now is this. I can wish it as much as I want that these issues would not be happening, but they are happening. <laughs> and they were. <laughs> <laughs> so it's okay that they are happening. We're going to get through it one way or another. Because, and this is something else that I noticed, and I know you probably noticed this for yourself, but I want you to share about that. I noticed that the only difference between me and all these other people that I have ever ever interviewed about these subjects and the people that are listening, the viewers out there, the only difference between us is I don't quit. That's the only difference. I notice people taking this on, taking that on, and the next thing you know, six months goes by, they're doing something else because they didn't get the overnight success. Well, guess what? My success has been ten years in the making. Nobody wants nobody wants to know about that. You know, they just see, hey, there is this network, there's all this stuff going on. Oh, isn't that great? But guess what? I had times when things weren't great and I couldn't pay my bills. And, nobody and wants to hear about that. That's right. And 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 where where you are, Steve, is is that we're moving in a society where it's that momentary. We want it right here, right now, yesterday. And I can remember, and I know I'm dating myself, and I'm sure you can remember as well. Don't you remember when television went off at like midnight? Mm -hmm. Well, <laughs> you know? uh, remember I said I grew up in a communist country? Yes. Listen, listen to this, Nick. We only had one channel. <laughs> See? See? And, it, and it did go off at midnight. <laughs> yes. <laughs> And so I remember that, and now we're in this society now where we got 24-hour television, 24-hour internet, we got phones that give us talk, stock tips, everything that we need to want at our fingertips, and we're just in that society where we want, want, want immediate gratification. And we're moving, we move past that, I'm sure you can appreciate 
how far you've come over the last 10 years and the same with myself because we've lived it we've worked through it we and and we've gotten to a point in our lives where you know things are things are great but people don't want to hear the story behind it mm -hmm. they they see the visual and they want well, how can I how can I set up a radio show? How can I set how up a live have, TV? Yeah, how, how can, can I, I have what he's got and I yes. want it overnight? Yes. <laughs> and I need to be set up and running by Friday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I want it for free. Yes. <laughs> yes. I don't want it to cost me. I I cannot think of a, a bigger damage that the internet marketing gurus have caused than this whole thing about giving away stuff for free because it is so backfiring that it's not even funny because because what we're doing what we have done to each other is this this idea that I'm gonna give you something some value and you don't have to return any value for it that doesn't work that doesn't work in the universe Exactly. We, create, we created something that's a lie because we already know that when we give you something for fee, underneath that, we have an agenda, don't we? Exactly. There's always <laughs> a personal agenda on anything. Yeah, when I, I, I'll give you a good example. One of the things that I do, if you probably saw it on my website, is that I offer a free initial consultation. Well, by design, I have done my research to know that once someone has had an initial conversation with me and we build a relationship and there's a connection, nine times out of ten, the relationship is not over. But in order for them to understand the process of coaching, you have to allow them to experience at least a sample of it first. And that becomes the marketing tool to be able to close them on a coaching package or continue the relationship with them. Yeah, so that's why I do complimentary shows like this, Nick, because it's an experience. Yes. And if, if you don't have the experience, I can, I can sit here and talk to you all day long. You're not going to get it. Exactly. Because the only way to get a concept is by clearly understanding, you know, what the concept is. And you have, it's an experiential kind of a thing, just like, just like your free uh, consultation. People get to be with you and you get to be with them and you get to begin a relationship. So so that's great. Uh, by the way, we're coming to the end of the show here pretty quickly. Um, and it's just another proof that time does not exist. I prove it on every time I do my Mind, Body and Soul show and any of my other shows. It's because people go, when I say we're running out of time, they go, what? <laughs> it's just We just started two minutes ago. That's right. Um, <laughs> Great dialogue and, and communication. And so, so let's talk about we being present. I, I just want to remind everybody uh, that are watching and also on the archives is that pay attention to when we're doing this show and we're doing this dialogue is that we are completely present. I'm completely present with you, Nick. I get who you are as a human being. And, and I am, my mind is not thinking about what I have to do after this show. It, it's not important. What's important is to be here, be with you, and even get what you may not say between the sentences and between the words. That's how much I'm paying attention to you. I appreciate that. <laughs> I'm doing the exact same. <laughs> yeah. I'm doing the exact same thing. I'm learning from you how how this not only this process works, but be able to have a genuine open conversation and dialogue about a subject that I think we both are so passionate about and this helping profession and certainly the giving giving which falls under this profession but being able to share that through this medium I think it's awesome yeah thank, thank you Nick and so uh, let's take the opportunity uh, for you to talk a little bit about your website how people can contact you if they want that initial uh, free consultation and anything else that you want to share that you're up to right now Sure. Um, they can contact me through my website, which is www.nicholasdillon.com. And you can also find me on Facebook. I'm on social media. Just type in The Belief Coach, 
and I will come up, join my Facebook fan page, and I also tweet out constantly throughout the day. I've learned the technology, Steve, and I'm kind of addicted to it. And you can find me on Life Coach Nick on Twitter, and I Instagram motivational stuff and, and self-help stuff a lot because I like to push that out in the universe so that it changes people's thinking in a moment. Um, you can feel free to email me if you want to reach out um, by email at thebelievecoach at gmail.com. And um, if you're interested in the coaching consultation, you can sign up for that right through my website, again, www.nicholasdillon.com. Awesome. Thank you, Nick. So I, I want to be straight with everybody. So I am no longer happy with just reaching the people that are awake and conscious, because that's easy. <laughs> I am, what I'm up to now, I mean, anybody that's in this, into this conversation, they will understand uh, and can relate to what we're talking about. I'm interested in reaching the 90-some percent of people <laughs> out there that are not awake and conscious and still going to work in the morning, uh, hating their jobs, yes. and, and they get angry. And they don't know how to how to manage that anger. They don't know how to respect themselves, respect their wives, respect their kids. They they taking their anger out on the family because you know what do we do when we love others? We we take it out on the ones we love because nobody else will put up with us, right? Yes. <laughs> yes. You can't hurt somebody on the street because that they won't they won't put up with it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so. So I am very much interested in your some of your ideas about how do we reach outside this box of being awake and being conscious and reach the people that are glued to television six, four to six hours every day. How do we reach them? And what I have done, um, <clears throat> Steve, is, is I have... And I like that you. I like that concept, and I like that mission. Is because what I have done is, is I've went in the community, and sometimes you got to go outside of what your comfort zone is and your comfort level is. It's easy for me to get hired by an organization and go and do a speaking engagement. They came to hear me. It's easy for me to do a seminar and invite people there. They came to hear me. That's your comfort but, zone. Yes. Mm -hmm. But the challenge is, and I challenge myself constantly to be able to, I go in, I do some training in the, um, the prison system here. And one of the things that I do is, is that I offer them, once they get out, reach out to me. And if they don't reach out to me, I have some kind of um, connection where I can even reach out to them. And I go in the community, whether I'm at the barber shop or even in the grocery store, and I'm a good not reader of nonverbal communication. And, and when I'm flying and traveling, I'll have conversations on the plane and talk about it. But my whole objective is engage me because I'm going to engage you. And when I find the need that you need help, and you, you gave an excellent example of that individual who's not going to say anything, but they're going to work each day and they hate it. Those are the folks I challenge myself to connect with and really push them to pursue their passion, push them to speak up if they need to. Um, if it's a boss or someone that's not just driving you crazy or whatever the case is, just pushing them just a little bit to the edge to try something new. And so, it, which is why I tap into all these mediums that are out there in terms of reaching people. You know, you, you got to keep doing it. You know, I can't begin to tell you how many times I've had initial free consultations, and at the end of the consultation, they say, Nick, I can't afford your services. And my reply to that is that, but you're motivated. So when do I want to see you next? When can we schedule our next appointment? And I'm not asking you for money. I'm asking to be able to help you. Yeah, I basically feel they can afford not to. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> is, is the truth. So, so what's also interesting, you, you hit on something, which is what I feel that stops people is that they think they know. Exactly. I used to think I knew, but um, I didn't really. 
<laughs> so yeah, because so, to find out. Yeah. So when you when you're talking about when you're talking about um, consciousness and you're talking about being awake, for me, it's it's the it's our ability to be open to have an open mind is what consciousness is. To be able to have that open mind, and to be able to, don't be afraid to live on purpose. And one of the things that you mentioned, stay present. If you, that's a powerful thing. If you can stay present and live forward, it's the best. Those are two of the best choices that you can do. And I'm going to put a little plug out there. I don't know if you've read the book, The Four Agreements. Yeah, of course. awesome book. Awesome yeah. book. You know, I love it because it it challenges you to bring the best you to the table each and every day. And if I can do that and I challenge myself to do that on an ongoing basis, then I don't bring negativity, I don't bring baggage. And for a lot of people, I say this in this profession, to do the work in yourself and go to that depth of consciousness that each one of us has, for a lot of people is challenging. A lot of people don't want to do the work because to do the work means I got to go through the hurt and the pain and the struggles and I got to come out stronger, wiser, but to get there hurts. Yeah, you're right on. So there's one more thing I wanted to mention before <clears throat> before we close the show, which is, um, and this is a good example of the mind, body, and soul show. It's a, it's a three-legged stool. It involves our our mind, our brain, uh, our spirituality, our our beliefs, um, our higher self, and it involves our body. Well, I've been I've been living this three-legged stool, but I've been living it with only two legs <laughs> because um, for a long time I didn't consider that my body is as important and how I take care of my body is as important as I know now. See, I thought I knew uh, and I didn't. So <clears throat> I'm. what's becoming um, really clear to me is that when our bodies are toxic, and, and I'm just going through a whole process right now to, um, I completely committed myself to be uh, non-toxic in terms of my body, and uh, it's you. giving it's giving me so much energy and and so much possibility in terms of what can I create. It, it's I feel like I'm 19 again, and I'm 60. Excellent. I'm 60. I don't know when you look at me. Can you say? Can you see that I'm 60? No, you don't look <laughs> 60. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm gonna and I'm gonna prove to the rest of the world that I'm gonna get younger and younger and younger. I'm awesome. not gonna age. That's and, awesome. And and so so why this is important? It's important because I don't believe anymore because I I used to I used to think that I knew that just the fact that we take our mind and connect it to our hearts and also have our spirit be connected to to who we are and who we are being is enough. We cannot ignore our health and our body because if the body is toxic so is our thoughts so is our energy so is everything else that we attempt to do and guess what I'm not experiencing the little guy in my head hardly at all I think the little guy in my head that used to say all the negative things is gone on permanent vacation because my body is getting completely detoxified and 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 he's not getting fed <laughs> exactly <laughs> exactly so he doesn't like it here anymore <laughs> so he's moving on <laughs> yes yes so i just wanted to make sure that this was really clear i communicated very clearly to everybody that that this three-legged stool is 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 only a three-legged stool and it's only going to be able to stay up if we do take care of our bodies or mind and and our spirit well stated I, I couldn't agree with you more yeah so Nick thank you so much you've been an absolute delight it's been so easy to be with you here uh, on the network and be with you here on the show 
and have this fantastic dialogue. I really appreciate you, and I want to acknowledge you uh, for who you are and who you are being for, for the world. Thank you. Same to you for this opportunity. Yeah, thank you, and uh, I'm sure we'll cross our paths. We will. Thank you so much. See you, everybody, uh, same time, same place next week on the Mind, Body, and Social on Conscious Evolution Media Network. Uh, always at 2 p.m. Um, uh, Mountain and 1 p.m. Eastern, I mean 1 p.m. Pacific and 4 p.m. Eastern, uh, right here, same place, uh, Google Plus, Hangouts. Thank you so much. See you guys next week.